Welcome to Questions from the Closet. I'm Ben Shalati. And I'm Charlie Bird. Each episode, we discuss a question we commonly get asked as LGBTQ Latter-day Saints. We're not trying to answer this question or come to a consensus, but simply sharing our perspectives. Today's question is, oh shoot, I just had it. Where did it go? Today's question is, what do I do if listening to a conference hurts? Ben and I are not terribly diverse, and we share many opinions and life experiences. For example, both of us watched conference this year, this October. Yeah, two days ago. The 194th semi-annual general conference. (laughs) Is that right? I I don't know the number. Um, However, there are some pretty big differences. For example, you went in person, and I watched it at home with my family, because I'm in Washington State right now visiting home. Hence this virtual recording. Um, but yeah, I went in person. It was kind of like a surprise last minute thing. It was actually, I was laughing so hard because the night before Ryan was like, I'm so glad we're not going to the conference center. It's just this sea of prairie dresses that you, it's impossible to get through. <laughs> and then we woke up in the morning and I was like, Hey, we're going to conference. I have tickets. So get ready. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah. And I just watched it on a TV at my dad's house and at my brother's house. So I bet it was Such more comfortable, blast. to be honest. Yeah, it was great. I mean, very, very comfy and cozy. Um, so, yeah, anyway, we watched the conference the way that lots of people do. Um, but we decided to have this conversation because you called me on Saturday between sessions, and I was not in a good place. I mean, I was literally in Washington in a good place, but like mentally not in a good place. And, and we had just like a really open and vulnerable conversation. You called me out on a lot of my, uh, a lot antics, of my, your antics, Ben. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, uh, on a lot of my black and white thinking. Um, I'm not sure like it was the right time for that conversation because I hadn't like showered yet that day and I needed to shower before the next session. I was in a bit of a rush, but also we were like, processing hard things and you said i wish we could have just recorded this conversation so people could have heard it and honestly i mean it's good for us to process things together i'm not sure the world needed to hear that conversation so we're, we're not going to recreate that conversation but i do want to like talk about some things about it and also why listening to conferences is sometimes difficult and how we've moved forward yeah yeah and and i think both of us in this conversation, we're not trying to like change anybody's view or experience with conference. Cause you know, it's like religion is very personal. Spirituality is personal and however you experienced it is wonderful or maybe not, you know? Um, so we're not here to say that like you should have taken a different approach. Um, but I think it's important to be honest about the feelings that we experienced as gay Latter-day Saints um, and maybe provide a little bit of a nuanced perspective that can hopefully increase empathy. Um, it it kind of reminds me of um, the the one talk. Oh my gosh, I love her. I why, why am I blanking her name right now? Sister Tamarunia. Tamarunia. Yeah, I want to call her Tammy because I she's friends with Ryan's mom, and she's always like, I had lunch with Tammy, <laughs> but. Um, Sister Runia, she gave a really beautiful talk and said, like, essentially, sometimes we just need empathy. We just need, like, a listening ear. So hopefully we can kind of provide that perspective today. Yeah, I feel the same way. If someone had an amazing time at General Conference and nothing hurt their feelings, like, great. Like, I don't want to change your experience. Um, but I, I do want to share my experience. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I was I was just joking with Ben before we started, too, that our similarity and difference could be that um, we both found parts of conference difficult or painful, but it was two different parts on two different <laughs> days. It's funny because like the first day I was fine and like I was talking to you, and then the second day you were fine and I wasn't. Yeah. Um, I was also I was also, like in the middle of something like we were moving a mantle and bookcase out of my grandma's old house, so like we were doing something. So I was like listening, but I was also like I was doing something. like I was in the middle of something that like had to happen that day. Yeah. Anyway, so um, before we start, Ben, I'm curious, do you have any like reservations about having this conversation? Um, my, my main reservation is, you know, I just, there there've been a lot of situations like this where like, I, I've been hurt by something and someone else hasn't. And they're just like, help me understand. And, and I, I just, I don't want to make anyone like, I just don't want to have anyone feel 
like differently about an experience that they have. Like if you, if you had a great time, awesome. Um, but I'm also really concerned that uh, I just like, don't want to get canceled. And I know that this is like a, a like a conference is a special sacred thing. And I'm, I am worried that, that, that people um, will be like, well, Ben didn't like general conference. Therefore he's terrible. And he we should, doesn't like, not. yeah. Or he doesn't sustain church leaders or whatever. You yeah. Know? Precisely. And, and uh, I, I guess maybe just like to frame like my attitude of, about church things in general um, is the, and I probably mentioned this before, is the parable of the two sons. And it's a short parable and the Lord tells this parable and he says, there are two sons and that the, were the sons of a, of a master of a vineyard. And he said to his two sons, go and work in the vineyard. And one of them said, I will go. And then he didn't go. And the next one said, I will not go. And then he repented and he went. And I feel like I'm kind of like the son who's like, I'm not going to go, but then I go like, I, I will talk about hard things and get my feelings hurt. Uh, but I always like do the things like conference can be hard for me and, 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 and teaching some church leaders in general can, can be hard for me, but I still like do the things. And so, you know, and, and if, and if people are in a place where they don't want to listen to someone who is sometimes struggles with things at church leaders say like, I mean, I, I guess I'm not your guy. Um, but I am someone who like does the things. It sounds like you feel like you need to prove people that you're worthy to listen to. Yeah, I, definitely. And I don't think it's just something I think, but it's not just like this minority stress in me or like the fact that I uh, was raised in a straight world as a gay person. And I feel like, uh, if I'm not perfect, then I won't be validated. You know, it's not just because of that. It's just the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So it's difficult. Yeah. Well, and and Charlie, I think for you, a lot of, do you have any reservations? Well, I think for a lot of people, it's just, it's difficult to conceptualize that something a general authority or the prophet can say, or might say could cause pain. Um, it's like an experience that some people haven't had. And um, when people talk about general conference, it's oftentimes like, oh, it's the best weekend. I just love it. I feel so hopeful. I'm so sad when it's over. And for me in the past and for a lot of other gay saints, I know there's like a certain level of anxiety that almost always accompanies it because of just like the unknown of how what they say might cause us to feel and or um, cause other people to believe and then react against us. Um, and so it can be really difficult and, and it's hard to like, think of, or just consider like, this doesn't mean that I'm not supportive of church leaders or willing to sustain church leaders. It just means that there's tension there and maybe, I, I don't know, there, it's just, again, if, if that's not the conversation you want to hear right now, then maybe don't listen to this one. So, yeah. And, and I, I want to just kind of like start by, by sharing a bit of a story. So when we were talking on the phone on Saturday, um, I said this thing that is true. And I, I said, they didn't say anything new. Like, this is the same thing they've been saying forever. Like, like there's nothing new here. Um, and, and yet it was still painful. And, and so when, 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 any, when things come up like this, it's not just like they happen in isolation, but, but they happen uh, like, like uh, it brings up past experiences as well. And you said something, and this was specifically, we were talking about a, a talk by, by president Oaks. And you said, well, he's been saying the same thing since 2017. And I said, no, Charlie, he's been saying the same thing since long before that you just started hearing it in 2017, because that's when you started like coming to terms with your orientation. And uh, a, a, a specific, a specific memory has come to mind in the last few days um, from exactly 10 years ago from October conference, 2013, uh, I was living in Tucson. Um, I had just been going on a lot of dates with with this woman, Leanne, that I was really close with. We had like the most spiritual experiences together. And I thought that maybe she and I could work something out and get married. And it was just like clear, like it wasn't going to happen. And I just, uh, I, I won't go into details about the whole story, but I had this very specific spiritual impression where I was like, you do not need to marry Leanne and you don't need to date women anymore. And so, and that was right before general conference. And so I, I had this experience where I was like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to date anymore. Uh, and then I went into to general conference with these eyes of like, I, like, I need to figure out how to move forward now. Like, if I'm not going to try and marry a woman, like, what is my life going to look like? At, at the time, this was, this was 10 years ago, so I was 29. And I wasn't out publicly. Like, most people didn't know I was gay. 
And I remember going to my friend's house to watch General Conference. And I had like the best experience on, on the, the Saturday before. Like I just like felt known and seen and loved. And it was this really beautiful experience. And on Sunday, I went to my friend's house and, and President Oaks spoke. And, you know, he talked about the importance of, of marriage between a man and a woman. And basically, the, and I remember him saying like so-called gay marriage. Like I remember that like that word, like so-called gay marriage. I haven't read the, I don't, I haven't read the talk in years. I don't remember the specifics, but I remember it being about that. Um, and I remember afterwards, uh, a friend, of, a good friend of my friends who I was watching with was there. And she basically said, take that. Like, don't you see? Like, that's how it is. And she had no idea at the time that I was gay. Um, and that was just like, I just remember like feeling just like, so like like he like he had said something and then it was like she used those words to negate what i was going through even though she didn't know what i was experiencing and so um and, and so as i as i as i heard as i heard him say you know marriage between a man and a woman is essential and if we want to be like god we all have to be married and sealed in the temple and that is the only way um i i thought um you know how how many how many households are experiencing something right right now where, where someone says, "You see, that's how it is. It has to be that way." And all the all the the, the closet people in the room who who are feeling so left out of the plan of salvation at that moment and and what they're experiencing because because I know what that was like. And af- afterwards, like this friend left and and I I unloaded on my my other friends who were there who did know that I was gay and I had recently had a crush on this guy in my ward who I didn't know if he was gay. I still don't know if he's gay. I haven't seen him in many years. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, who, who knows? Who knows what happened to him? Um, and, uh, and, and, and I cried. Like it, I was going through a, like a really tough time just like trying to figure out my place. And it felt like I just didn't have one and that people didn't, didn't seem to understand that that was painful for me. Yeah. Yeah. That, I think that's a really powerful story. And I'm sorry you experienced that. And I'm sorry that you will experience, basically are experiencing it again, you know? Um, I do want to push back a little bit on something you said. Please. Because um, c- c- you said that that was the first time I noticed in 2017. Um, and I don't think it was at all. I think I've been very perceptive of talks like this ever since I was a child. Um, but just the way it hit me was different because before say we're using 2017 as like the marker, right? Cause that's close to when I started coming out to people. Um, before that, things like this would push me deeper into shame and push me deeper into trying to be straight and judging myself against not being straight. And so the sadness I was feeling there was this feeling of like, I, it was like this longing and like fighting and like keep knocking, keep trying, keep trying, but like the continual disappointment. Um, but after that, it was more like, okay, this is part of me. I am gay and that's not changing. So what does that leave me with? And so that was the shift, you know, it, it became yeah. to like, is there a place for me in God's kingdom? Is there a place for me in the church? Because here's this thing that I, tried so hard like i have tried so 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 hard to have a temple marriage and Mm -hmm. the whole time i was trying i was sad i was depressed i was ridiculously tempted by pornography i was cutting off relationships with friends and family i felt like god hated me i felt like i wasn't good enough um and then all of those problems went away when i came out almost you know like a lot of them and then it was like okay now what and so I think it was just like a different flavor of pain that's more visible, um, sharper, I think now, but still painful. And that's weird. It's weird when someone you revere and respect and a church leader that you love and has inspired you also says things and teaches church doctrine that makes me feel depressed. Mm-hmm. It's weird. It's weird. 
Yeah. And, and you know, back in, and thank you for clarifying that, you know, back in 2008, I was 24 and, uh, you know, Prop 8 was happening in California. And, you know, a lot of people were talking about gay marriage, you know, it was just starting to become legal in some states. And, uh, and I had come out to a handful of people, but I was barely out. And someone asked me, you know, not knowing that I was gay. And, and, and uh, they, they said, you know, why, like, why, why do you think gay marriage is so bad? And this is, this is what I said. Uh, I, I said some, something like, um, well, imagine how awful it would be to marry someone, form a life with this person, and then you die and you're not even attracted to them anymore. And it's not the kind of relationship you want to be in. Like, like that's what I said. And, and that's because I didn't even seem like none of this conversation, like was even about me. Like as, as we were talking about gay marriage, like that wasn't about me. Like I wasn't gay. I had same sex attraction. It was still something that was fixable. And mm -hmm. so I think, I, I think these kinds of messages uh, hit differently based on, you know, where we're at, how we view ourselves and, totally. and, uh, and which is why, like, like if someone had said to 24 year old me, you know, general conference was hard. I'd be like, what, why? Like, not, right. how could that be hard? It's the word of God. Well, and, it's weird because it, it was like, it used to be hopeful. Like things like this used to be like, oh, I can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what was hard about this weekend, Ben, for you? Um, uh, just a normal existential crisis, you know? <laughs> <laughs> run, so, yo, we're out of the mill. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, th th this, this is what happened. And this happens to me from time to time. You know, in, in my 20s, I, I tried really hard to get married to a woman. You know, I, I, you know, I said this all the time, but I, I went on 27 blind dates in my 20s. You know, I went out with over 100 women. You know, I, I spent thousands of dollars and spent many hundreds of hours trying to get married and, and just was not successful. It, it wasn't the, the right path for me. Um, but I felt like that was the only way. Like, I felt like that was the only way to have a good life. And it was the whole point of life. You know, if, if was, I didn't get well, married and, and it's preached like this weekend, it was preached that that is the only way to be happy. Uh, yeah. And, and like, if, if I wasn't married, then like my time on earth would be wasted. Wasted. Um, yeah. and, and so, and, 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 and then, so w when I heard multiple times, you know, marriage between a man and woman is essential. I thought, well, you know, what does that mean for me? And I don't, none of, no one said that in, in, in the, in the, in like the context of, of, of gays. Like we, we weren't, but, but that's how I heard it. Um, cause I am gay and I have heard that in the context of, 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 you know, people experiencing same sex attraction. And, and so I thought, well, is, is this just like a mortal phase? Like, is my orientation just something that is, is, is just part of my moral probation that, that will go away? And, and, and then, then I spiraled and I thought, well, am I supposed to be marrying a woman? Like, is that what I'm supposed to be doing right now? And if that's not, like, am I just meant for lesser glory than other people? And I guess it would still be good, but am I just like meant for less? And then I started to feel less then. And I just kind of like spiraled for a bit. It didn't last long, but I did have a spiral of, of do I really fit in this plan? Or is my place in this plan to eternally be be less than someone who is capable of being in a marriage with a woman? I would say, Ben, that the vast majority of gay saints feel that way. We feel like we were inherently created to be less than. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I'm feeling a bit of emotion, just like even like thinking that because i like i have never been actively suicidal but you know i've said before i i was definitely passively suicidal and and uh just like wishing i could die because i really thought i'd be better off dead and straight than alive and gay and and i like felt that again this weekend like would i be better off dead and um i just like hate that i felt that you know like i i know better um, but that was a, a real reaction to, to what happened this weekend. I'm sorry, Ben. Yeah. And, oh, that's, uh, that just like rips my heart. Cause I love you. I mean, I care about you so much and, and I've seen miracles with you. Like I've, we've done amazing work together. I know who you are and I know how confident you can be in, in this passion, this, this work and who you are and to have somebody with like religious authority that you admire and respect say something that immediately can make you question all of the growth you've experienced in the past like 10 years 
that's that's just another run-of-the-mill existential crisis <laughs> just a regular existential crisis but, but the other thing that was hard is like like in my oh. in my book in my book i talk about how hard it was for me to be told that i would that that i wouldn't be gay in the next life and that uh and, and that i would be able to be married to a woman in the next life like how hard that was for me and how that made me wish i could die and you know no one said anything about any orientation changing but but the message was clear multiple times that if like this is how you what needs to happen to be exalted and if you don't have that chance right now you everyone will have the opportunity and so even though there was no it, it wasn't couched in lgbtq language like but that's why i heard it and so in my book I, I i said this made me want to die and then that same thing was said and it also just made me question like like does what i do super matter because here i am like warning people that this that this teaching made me want to die and then here it just keeps happening and, and i'm not saying that like it's not true or people shouldn't teach truth uh, but that is the that is the effect of the teaching for me, like at, at this point in my life. Yeah. And, and I know like something you had said to me, I guess this was two days ago now. Um, you were like, I just know that right now there are gay members of the church who were hanging on and are trying to hang on and today have decided to leave, to stop. Yeah. And, and, they, and they might be better off now. They might find more peace it's yeah am i allowed to say that like yeah that's and, and, uh, and i don't want to say like, like what like like what would be a better option for anyone like i don't even want right, to right, right. with that um but but i i just like can't i don't know if i can like adequately describe the level of love i have for the church of jesus christ with all your saints like i just really love it and i honor and respect my friends who choose to leave like i do but in my heart of hearts, when I'm being really honest, I just wish everyone could be a member sad. of the church. Yeah. Right. I just, right. And, and so, and so <laughs> at the same moment that I'm like thinking, am I, be would I be better off dead? I'm also thinking, man, I wish everyone could be part of this. And also being like so sad that this message is going to push people away. And so it was just a lot of feelings. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, and, and it's, it's awkward too. Like, oh my gosh. Because, like, a lot of times I'll get feedback that's like, well, you just have, like, um, Stockholm Syndrome. You fell in love with your abuser. And, like, and, and it, so it's just, it's not just, like, the conference talk that causes its pain or the doctrine that causes its pain. It's, like, these reminders of your childhood shame and all the ways you feel like you fear that you're second class. And then the way everybody else responds like rips you apart because then on the one hand you have people saying oh well you should just like shut up and fall in line and then the other people are saying like you fell in love with your abuser and you're mentally damaged and you're a masochist and it's like great like i'm so grateful that i get to deal with this on this beautiful fall weekend when i was just trying to learn about jesus like it's really rocking yeah. And, and also like, those are, those are the, the messages I get, like from some people they say, oh, the church is toxic. You should just leave. And other people saying you're in, uh, and then the believer is saying, Oh, you have trouble with the church. You should just leave. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's answer, whether they're a believer or not is why don't you just leave? And, and it's hard and, when the thing that makes you find God and has shown you God before that system also like incites fear. Mm -hmm. Ugh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's enough about my existential crisis. Charlie, what was... Well, what was I don't know if it is because oh. I, well, I, I, I want to stay here for a little bit, if that's okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Because I, I do want to say that you were really, really concerned about everyone else feeling the way you felt. Mm -hmm. um, and about everyone else who didn't have the same support, maybe was in a more vulnerable position. Um, and also concerned about like, I don't know, like it made me concerned for the people who were like I used to be, you know, and like, oh, cool, I'm going to give it another go just to like almost face disappointment. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Everyone's life's different. But um, well, should I talk about this now or later? Because I'm interested in when we talked Saturday, I was fine. I actually had a really good experience with this talk. And it was weird because you'd had a really negative one. 
Yeah. And I, I, that conversation, I like, we were both really honest and I was like, Charlie, you're doing the craziest mental gymnastics right now to like be okay with this. Right. Was, but, but I wasn't, I, I really feel like I wasn't like, that's how I intercepted the talk. Um, so I, I kind of want to talk about that if that's okay, or we can talk about the later because it is yeah, a little no, more go, hopeful. Yeah, go ahead. Well, it was, it was interesting because I felt like for the first time, this was presented in a way that gave, oh, this is going to sound bad. And I can just, I can already hear the, <laughs> I can hear the rebuttals. <laughs> I mean, Charlie, I, I, when, you, when you said what you were about to say, I rebutted it immediately. So, yeah. <laughs> so. Well, well, listen, I, like what I heard, the notes I took were, we have a loving Heavenly Father who will see that we will receive every blessing and every advantage that our own desires and choices allow. And I was like, wow, that's a new take on this. Because usually the message is, if you can't do it, you're screwed. But today it was, you have a loving Heavenly Father who's going to give you every blessing he possibly can. And of course, it was talking about like exaltation being the highest degree of the, the celestial kingdom and how to get there. It's like church doctrine is marriage between a man and a woman. But like, I, I guess I just appreciated for the first time, I felt like I saw a really beautiful, um, like esteem for the entire plan of salvation um, and the many mansions. So like all of God's children will inherit a kingdom of glory in which, like by which laws they can comfortably abide. And this is weird and it might be too much for people, but I was thinking, you know what, what if I can't come, like, I don't when I think of exaltation as is taught by the church, I don't want it. It actually sounds awful to me. And that's really jarring for people to hear. But the thought of me and my soul being eternally married to a female just doesn't, it, it's wrong. It feels wrong. I don't want to, I cannot comfortably abide by those laws. I can't, I don't want it. And I, and I don't believe in a God who would reward me with a punishment who like if i live this perfect life even if i were to like stay single and tit for tat do everything i get there and he's like here's the thing you don't want most enjoy exaltation i like i just don't feel that but it was just like i liked this idea of heavenly father will see that we receive the blessings and advantages that our own desires and choices allow and put us in the place where we can comfortably abide and i guess it just like I felt more grateful and I was like, you know what, if maybe, maybe God, maybe God really just created me because he needs me to serve somewhere else. And maybe that's fulfilling the measure of my creation. And it's not second class because for me, like with my current knowledge, it sounds like being married to a woman forever would be second class for me. That sounds awful. I don't want that. Um, and I don't know what the, second place looks like, you know, and maybe for a straight person, what I get will be second class for them. But for me, maybe what they get would be second class for me. I don't know. Does that, is any of this making sense? Yeah. And I think it's a really generous take on what was said. And I, I think it's a really lovely, um, but uh, you know, the, the word lesser was used. And so mm -hmm. um, I, I think that uh, it's, it's just inherently difficult to say, well, well, I want something lesser, but that's better for me. Um, yeah. And, and at the same time, well, like, like, is it... I know, I know. I understand that. And, so... and like I said, I'm not saying that anybody else had to feel it the way I did, but I just, for me, and, and, and I don't want to, I, I realize that it's complicated, but I liked me feeling like God wasn't going to force me into a glory where I'm uncomfortable because of who I am. And that I'm going to have a secure placement in the right kingdom as long as I follow Christ and do the best I can with what I was given. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm like earnestly doing the best I can with what I was given. And even though like it, for a lot of people, I completely understand why this was like heartbreaking. But for me, I, it's almost like the heartbreaking words didn't sink through to my soul. And just this idea of like God saying, and the spirit saying, you're doing the best you can, and you will have secure placement in the right kingdom of glory. Trust that. And I felt, I was like, okay, I'll trust it. And like, 
it, it was like what sunk into me was that message that I needed and the rest just kind of like whooshed on past. Yeah. And so and, uh, like, that's a lovely take on it. I, I, I think that's great. And I'm, I'm, I'm really honestly so glad you had that experience. I, I think it's a really, I, I think looking at this as God yearns to give all of us everything that he possibly can. I love that. And I, I think that's true. I, th- I think that's yeah. a, a beautiful, a beautiful truth to, to take from this. Um, what, what kind of what I took from this, and once again, maybe this is just my human brain that has some flaws in it. But um, you know, immediately after, I was just thinking, like, what's the point? Like, why am I even trying? Like, why am I living? <laughs> yeah. any of the, like, like, why does it even matter? Yeah, but well, that was part. Like, that didn't last very long. Like, that is obviously like a thinking error. And um, it was and funny. I, I was what, like, Ben, <laughs> Ben, your your cognitive <laughs> distortions are showing this is generalization yeah, and, and black and white thinking. Sorry. Yeah, which, which which I know, like, and I'm a human being, so that happens. And I those didn't last long, but that was the natural reaction that I had was like, what is even the point of me trying to live the gospel if I just can't make it to the end? Well, and... I'll tell you what stressed me out. Um, he said a couple times, like, the purpose of the church is to get people to exaltation. So, like, they're only focusing on that top thing or i guess like what we they, we see as the top th- i guess the top thing whatever um the highest degree we're gonna choose the, the, the highest degree the is highest degree. degree right um and so what stressed me out was if the only focus is exaltation in the meantime what it, where does that leave the rest of us who don't see that as a viable opportunity what does it leave like what does that leave for the single people for the gay people for anyone who like isn't there like does the church have a place for us and it felt like the answer was kind of like no you know it's like the church is here so if you're not shooting for this and you're not super comfortable with this you're going to be uncomfortable with everything i say right now and so in a weird way it kind of like explained the discomfort because i'm like of course they're focusing on that objective and people who feel uncomfortable with that objective are feel uncomfortable but it like did stress me out because I'm like, what about us? Like, what about the people who who aren't there, or but even just like temporarily, like the people who whose minds aren't there? Like, I just feel like anyone who can't see that as a viable option right now pulls away. Yeah, and, and, and that stresses and the, me out. And, and the truth is, like, I I try and live my life in such a way that like any blessing God has for me, like, is available to me. So, yeah. um, like, if it turns out that when I die, this gay thing was just part of my mortal experience and God's like, here's a woman who will be married forever and have a wonderful life. And that's actually what I want. Like, great. Like that, that, that seems jarring to me because I, I that would be like, I would be so different. Um, but like, yeah, if that's what happens. Okay. And, um, so, yeah. um, I, I, I do want to live my life in a way that like any, any blessings like are, are available to me that, that God has. Um, but that doesn't mean like, like I'm going to go work in the vineyard, you know, I'm going to, if I'm like, I might not want to do, it, but I'm going to go do the work. Um, but that doesn't mean that, that it doesn't feel just like so invalidating and make me feel so unseen and also make me question all of my life choices and experiences. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's hard to feel like there's an integral aspect of who I am that church leaders seem to not understand, even though they, I feel like could, is that like, and, 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 you know, who's to say, like, it, it just seems like, and it's not just like the highest church leaders, you know, it's like, there's people in my life. I'm like, it seems like the way you're viewing this is not, congruent with my experience and that's hard that's difficult yeah yeah it, it was hard and like, like I, I don't know any apostle like i don't talk to, i've never talked to any of them you know um so i, I don't know what they're doing but it, it, it did it did feel that way like I, I felt like oh you don't get my experience um but uh you know and maybe this is just like a mortal because like another thing that stressed me out i was like how how do we not judge people then if if we're like this talk of like well these people will get this kingdom and these people will get this one then how in our day-to-day lives as mortals are we not going to be constantly judging through who's going to get what and causing us to not connect with each other and have blind spots based on people's 
needs, you know? Um, I don't know. It, it's, I worry that it becomes like, I don't think God's doctrine is exclusive. I don't think the plan of salvation is exclusive, but I think the way it's interpreted by many people, including myself sometimes is very exclusive and makes some people feel like they're automatically saved and other people feel like they're automatically damned. And that's difficult to see that happen in real time. Mm-hmm. And I think, I don't know. Yeah. So have you, have have you heard that joke? Thoughts. Have you heard that joke about the person who gets to heaven? They're getting a tour and being told like, oh, this is here and this is here and this is here. Then they see a, a, a door that's locked and they're like, what's in there? Like, shh, be quiet around that door. That's where all the Mormons are. And they think they're the only ones here. <laughs> that's funny. Um, anyway, so that was my Saturday experience. Yeah. So tell us why Sunday was hard for you and wasn't so for me. Um, Sunday was hard for me because I think I was really excited. I felt really hopeful. I'd gone to the morning session in person and just had a really wonderful experience. And I think I was just like blindsided. Um, yeah, that's why. (laughs) Is it, do you want me to ask you more about (laughs) that? This one's harder to talk about, Ben. Yeah. Ask me questions about it. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. What, what was, what, what was the thing that you weren't expecting that blindsided you? Uh, I mean, it it was President Nelson's talk. Um, And I I think part of the reason it was so unexpected is because, like, I really love him. I revere him so much. I look up to him. And I, like, have this really strong testimony that he's the prophet. And some of the things he said, um, again, like, made me feel misunderstood or invalidated. Um, It it was weird because, like, there's this you know, man that I really respect and was excited to listen to and his message, which a lot of people found like hope and made me feel like this knot in my stomach and not in a way that was pushing me to like change or be better. It didn't feel like, it didn't feel like the spirit, you know, there's like the knot in your stomach that says when to talk to a church leader or when to bear your testimony. It wasn't that knot in the stomach. It was like this, I'm damned, like I'm inherently flawed, not in my stomach. And so I guess the same thing happened to me on Sunday that happened to you on Saturday. Like, yeah. And it really surprised me. So, um, so what, what he said got you to like question your worth or led you to question your worth. Yeah. And choices that I'm really confident in and choices that I feel like God led me to and have made me a better person. Um, and that was weird, you know, like I, I got married to a man and I feel really confident in that decision. And like, I, and again, like whatever, maybe I should just like not worry about how anyone responds. Cause it's like, if you don't like me, you already don't like me. But like, Ben, you were at my wedding. Like it was sacred. And so like everyone who was there told me they were like, that was one of the most spiritually impactful things I've ever witnessed. Like, like God was there. And so it was just so weird to hear that, like, God is offended by it. I, um, and so I didn't, and it just, like, it was, like, what I was hearing was, like, if you, like, it was, like, this eat, drink, and be merry type of thing. And I'm, like, this choice wasn't made through eating, drinking, and being merry. Like, it was made through, like nights on my knees and fasting and prayer and scripture study for years. And like, it was just, it was hard to like, feel like because of this, people will view me and my relationship as evil when like, we're good, you know, and we strive and we go to church on Sunday and we read scriptures every night and we pray and we're like earnestly trying to serve and help. And it, it, it scared me because 
Like, I, I really love the concept of think celestial. I think that's really beautiful. But how do you think celestial when your existence is impossible to get there? You know what I mean? How can you think celestial when you're a second class citizen, when you were made terrestrially is, is what it felt like. Um, and it was hard because, because I want to be like, no, like, I know that I have a relationship with God. I know that I can still utilize this and take this advice and think celestial because it, it is good to be in a spiritual mindset. Um, but then I, I think it, it made me worry that other people would, would think celestial by thinking poorly of me and gay people because like if if gay is not celestial then when you see a person think celestial oh they're less than me like i'm i'm i fear that th this catchphrase will perpetuate judgment and oppression for this demographic and it's weird because i think in most ways it's incredible like it's amazing advice it's really wonderful it's helpful it's uplifting it's spiritual it's cute um, but like for this, I just am nervous. So yeah, there's that. Charlie, can, can I ask for some clarification? So like the, the knot you felt, the dread you felt, was it feeling like I'm misunderstood? Like we're not on the same, like the church and I aren't are on the same page or was it, or was there this fear of like, oh, I've been praying and fasting on this and I made the wrong choice. I feel very confident in my decision. And, and I know God sees me and knows my heart. It's just weird, you know, like it, it felt like, I don't know, like I'm like, I'm, I don't know how to describe it. And you know what? Maybe people will just disagree, but I feel like I'm trying so hard to live a virtuous life and the best way I know how. Like I'm, like I said earlier, I feel like I'm doing the best I can with what I was given. And mm -hmm. it's, it's hard when, I don't know, it, when there's like this fear-based type of, to me that felt like incited fear in me rather than hope. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, and it's hard to reconcile like the prophet, you know, mm -hmm. um, who I love. So yeah, it, it made me feel like I was damned for existing. Not not so much because of the choices I made, maybe a combination of both, right? Yeah, and, um, and, and you say like I do want to push back on that a little bit. You say like like because of my existence or because of who I am, like like I'm damned. And you know there are lots of LGBTQ people, lots of people with same sex attraction who like our our existence doesn't define like our, our orientation doesn't define the choices we make. And and so I, I think saying you know because of my existence X Y and Z. Um, because we can do a lot within like the hands that we're dealt. Like we're not destined to make certain choices. I see what you mean. So you think it's just because I got married that I have those feelings? No, no, I don't think it's just because you got married. But I, I think that 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 was that that. Uh, I, I, what I'm trying to say, yeah, what I'm trying to say is it bubbled up those fears in me that I was a second class citizen. Yeah. And choosing any level of happiness on earth damns me in heaven. Mm -hmm. Which I don't feel, I don't believe, mm -hmm. but it's freaky to hear. Um, yeah. I don't know. Some of it, I, I don't know. Some of it in just like, I guess I just, and maybe it's just the wording choices. But like, like, I, it's so hard. Like, I, I don't like sounding critical of church leaders. I don't want to. Um, but like some, it wasn't just that. Like some things like, um, like food addictions are offensive to God. Like I work with people with eating disorders and really struggle with binge eating. And like, I worried about how they would interpret that. Like, oh, my mental health disorder is offensive to God. And the, the ideas of like, um, anger, like there's people who I know that, I don't know. It just, it just felt like very, like, if you're struggling, it's offensive to God and you need to level up, which maybe is a good thing to hear sometimes. Um, but where I am in my life right now, I was just like, I don't know. And then I just, I also thought of all the like parents who are like 
when their kid comes out, they say, you're ruining our eternal family and you're the reason that we're not going to be together forever. So thanks. And that it felt like this gives that more power. And I like, I believe families are like complete units and like, would God break apart families in the next life? And how does that work anyway? Like if, like if let's say like my dad left the church and I got gay married, if the rest of my family goes, it gets exalted. Do we, are we just like cut off from the family and they like Hermione Granger, you know, like do me and him become non-existent to their eternal perspective so they don't have to miss us because heaven can't be sad if you're exalted. I don't know. It's just weird. So it just gave me more questions than answers. I felt that freaked me out. Yeah. And that is freaky. And, and, you know, the, and, you know, whether, whether, uh, you know, no no matter what happens in eternity, like, like these are hard things right now. Yeah. I I think from my perspective, I would have loved that if the order was reversed because um, from the day one, I kind of got this, like God will give you the best you can for doing the best you can. And day two, I got this. If you don't get this, you're wrong is how I interpreted it. Right. And so I think it was just the way it was presented, like freaked me out and didn't feel hopeful. Yeah. Yeah, That's really interesting because I hadn't thought about it like this until just now, but um, I felt like with the talk on Saturday, there was like a requirement that I needed to do that I wasn't yet doing and didn't know, don't know how to do and feel like is like an impossible ask. And so it was like, I, like, I felt like I wasn't measuring up. And then in president Nelson's talk, he just like kind of listed a bunch of things we shouldn't be doing. And I'm not doing any of those things. Um, and, and so maybe that's why it wasn't so hard for me because I didn't feel a call to change. Right. Well, and so. you said that to me, I was like, that one was hard. And you're like, it was fine for me, probably because I'm keeping the law of chastity. And I was like, okay, thanks. <laughs> Great. That wasn't the best thing to say, but I was in the middle of moving a piece of furniture from my grandma's house. So. You get stressed moving furniture. I get stressed when I have to do two things at once. Um, I did love that he said that Heavenly Father's plan for us is fabulous, because I totally agree with that. Yeah. I think right. it is fabulous. Great. Well, Charlie, we've talked a lot about the hard things. I think we should shift gears and talk about like, you know, how we choose to move forward. So um, like, like for a short time on Saturday, I was like, maybe I'd be better off dead. Are all my life choices wrong? Um, should I just leave this organization? Like all those things. That is not how I'm feeling now. Like if, if yeah. we had recorded this on, on Saturday afternoon, like this would be a very different conversation that, that we're having now. And I'm in a, I, I feel like I'm, I'm back to normal me today. All right. Um, should I just like go into like what changed? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I I'm in town and like visiting, visiting home and, uh, my whole family lives in Washington except for me. And so everyone's here. One of my nephews just got home from his mission. And so like the whole family is here and I got to see my mom and give her a hug. And then, uh, my dad just sold my, my grandma's house. And, uh, as we were having Sunday dinner, um, some people were like, oh, I never, I never got to see it. And I was like, well, why don't we just go right now? Because it was just like, it's like eight minutes away from my brother's house. Yeah. So we, we all went there and just like had this blast. It was like reminiscing about the past and like showing the grandkids, uh, like, like my nieces and nephews, like, like where their great grandparents lived and who they never knew and they'd never been in the house before. And it's just like, it was like this really fun family moment. Um, and I was like, I just really love my family. And that was really helpful to me. And, you know, we weren't, processing general conference we weren't talking about it we were just like being like just being together with people that i love um was just really really healing for me um and then the the thought i had today was i have received personal revelation for my life and i seem to get back to those things that i was that i had felt called to do and um i don't need to to like like wallow in sadness or questions but just like like move forward and and um i completely agree with that so uh, this was the analogy I thought of today. So I love backpacking. Like I, I bought this backpacking backpack when I was 25 to go backpacking through Europe. And I just felt so cool with it. And I've, I've taken it to like three continents and I've been on like actual hiking trips with it. And I love it because you can put so much stuff in it. And if it's put on right, you, you barely even feel it. And I just feel so cool wearing this backpacking backpack. But if the straps aren't adjusted right or if, it, if it's packed wrong, it can be like the same thing that can be really easy to carry can feel really painful. 
um, and really uncomfortable. And I feel like over the weekend, my backpack got packed wrong. Mm. And, and like today I just kind of like repacked it and put it back on like the same stuff is all in it. And uh, so I just, I just feel like I had to like kind of put, first things first. And I'm going to mix up this analogy with another analogy. So my apologies for dual analogies, but I feel like, you know, sometimes when we talk about exaltation, I feel like we're talking about how to get a PhD where I'm still working on finishing elementary school. And, Mm -hmm. and so, you know, what, what, what matters now, like what matters, like whether or not I marry a, like if I marry a woman in the temple, it doesn't matter if I don't have faith in Jesus Christ. Like if I marry a woman in the temple, it doesn't matter if I don't repent of my sins. Like if I marry one in the temple, it doesn't matter if I don't learn to develop charity. And, yeah. and so I'm going to focus on those elementary things and worry about the rest of it later. Uh, because right now I don't need to worry about how to get a PhD because I'm still figuring out the basics and mastering those. And that was the thought I had today. And th- then I thought, okay, what, what have I been asked to do recently by God? Like what is the personal inspiration I, I, felt, I felt lately? And then I started acting on that. And I just felt so much joy and excitement for today and for the future. And mm-hmm. so, so for me, that was just so helpful to think like, okay, what, what can I do now to, to do the things that God has asked me to do now? And I'll worry about the rest of it later. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it reminds me of what the scriptures talk about. Like, don't miss the mark. Don't miss Christ. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is faith, repentance, charity, the covenants we've made. And like, if we're focusing so much on some like requirement or end goal, I feel like for me personally, that caused me to miss the mark. Um, I become inward focused on where I'm at rather than outward. Who am I going to support? Who am I going to lift? How am I going to serve? Um, and I, I love what you just said. Um, and with your first point, I think being with people and like talking about the way you feel with someone helps so much. Like, I, I would say, like, if, if you're feeling conflicted about conference or it's hurt you, talk to someone. Talk to someone you trust. If you feel unheard or undervalued, talk to someone who can listen and, and value you. Um, and, and, you know, God works in really mysterious ways because I think it became very apparent to me very quickly that I wasn't the only one who um, heard things a certain way that was like, huh? Um, and I yesterday had the best conversation I've ever had with one of my in-laws and they, it would, had caused them to look at things a little bit different way. And they were just like, Hey, I'm, I'm so grateful you're part of our family. Cause I see what you add. And he like told me about things that he loves about me and ways that their family has improved because I'm in it now and how my marriage has blessed their family. And that was really, really meaningful to me. It was so special and healing. And I wouldn't have had that experience had it not been for this other, you know, this, this talk that caused me a pain, you know, and, and I would, I would have given that trade off a hundred times over because it was really special to hear. Um, you seem like you have something to say. No, I'm just sitting in my chair differently. <laughs> um, and you know, a couple people texted me, um, people I like really respect and care about that were like, Hey, I want you to know that like, you've been a light to me and that you've helped me this way. And it just kind of reminded me that like, I'm divine and I've done good things. And just because other people might view me as less, or, um, I've made the choice to get married, which like, I guess for now disqualifies me from exaltation. <laughs> it, just feels like God knows me and loves me and I can do good. And so I'm just going to focus on that again. It just like boils me down to like, what am I doing day to day to become more like Christ? Um, which is helpful. Um, I have a couple other tips. Mm-hmm. Should I share Please. them now? Or do you have anything else to say? Yeah. You know, I just, um, I, I totally agree with what you said. Like, like, like get your feelings out, talk to someone trusted. And for whatever reason, like my conversation with you on Saturday made me feel worse. And it wasn't because, um, uh, and it wasn't because of anything you did. Um, I just think like in, in that moment, like, like letting out my frustration, just, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think I just need to process it. And I just like, wasn't ready to feel okay yet. 
Um, mm. and, and, and later I was, I, I was in a place where I could feel okay. And, and one of the things I did wrong that, that I wish I had done differently was, you know, I, a couple of friends texted me, like, how am I feeling? Like, like to ask how I was doing. And I, I was really harsh with some of them. Um, and what was maybe blunt about my feelings in a way that, that was more hurtful to them than helpful for me. And mm. I, I wish that, that I had, can you not... give an example? Is that, um, <laughs> uh, I, I know what I said, um, but I'm not sure if it'd be helpful to re-say it. Um, but, uh, yeah, someone asked how I was feeling and I, I basically, I basically said, um, I just don't have a place in this church. And, yeah. and I, and I, and I don't think I needed to, I think I let my hurt lead me to maybe say things in a way that hurt someone else. Because it made them and feel embarrassed of their church? Perhaps, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I, I don't know if that's a bad thing, Ben, because it's accurate to what you were feeling. And if someone yeah. understands that as harsh, it is accurate. And I think the difference is like being able to follow up and communicate and not just let that be like a, a close, a closer, you know? Because mm -hmm. I think processing emotions takes honesty at every level. But if you cut it short, then that's when it becomes an issue or can be hurtful, I, I feel. Yeah. So. Okay, what are, the, awkward, what are, what are the other tips? Oh, yeah. Um, so what, one thing I that helped me is, like, I didn't – I haven't defined my conference experience by – that one moment or those two moments there were talks that were really inspiring to me and inspiration i had that was really helpful and um i like like i heard this like christ like like i have quotes i have notes and like christ's mission is condescension he meets us where we are he goes all the way there's there's never a place we can go down to that christ's light isn't there and he's a mission of ascension and like even like exaltation is isn't about that we're not exalted through our actions we're exalted because of our companion with jesus christ like these kind of messages are like oh like i if i tether if i do the best i can and tether myself um like president freeman's like she was like i don't know if i can walk this trail and she couldn't but somebody was pulling her on a rope and she was hobbling through it just like, that's really inspiring to me. Like if my rope is tethered to Christ, I can do the best I can. And who knows what's going to happen in the next life. But I, I trust him and I trust that his atonement is so big, so big. And that he is so merciful that n repentance is real. Like I just trust Christ's atonement that as we get more information and it like, like God wants to save us. God wants us to get where we need to be. And I just trust the process. Um, and I, and I really feel like I'm where I need to be right now. And so I'm like, okay, I can trust the process. Um, and I don't know, there's just like beautiful thoughts, like build a boat in the middle of the desert, you know, like that's what God asked so many people to do. And so I'm like, okay, I'll do it. Even if there's not a, a drop of rain, clear skies for years. I'll just be ready, you know? Um, and then like that helps. Um, another thing I I've done is the, the talks that I found, um, questionable, I went through and I read them. So rather than like listening and going off my gut reactions, I read through the actual text a few times and that was able to help me pull out good things and highlight things that I wasn't so sure about or like caused me pain felt like that helped me give it gave a more accurate view of the cohesive message that I could focus on rather than just like the three lines that really hurt my feelings. And I think that has been really helpful in healing. And it makes me like, it's a way that I personally feel like I'm like sustaining and listening to the prophet's voice and like the brethren's voice. Cause it, it, I still am like getting the message without being distracted by the couple of sentences, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, another thing I did is I, I took my two favorite talks and I took my two least favorite talks and I cross-referenced them 
And so I'm like studying them cohesively, like as partners. And this is just the way that I'm doing it. But it's been really cool because I've been able to like have nice insights and be able to like um, adjust my emotional reaction. And I feel like I get a more uh, holistic view of what God needs me to hear right now. Um, mm-hmm. And then the last tip I, I made a note of is just to like consider the state of the church from the beginning. Um, and I say this all the time, but every time I read the Doctrine and Covenants, I'm like, wow, it was a mess back then. Like <laughs> the membership, the leadership, everything was just like a mess. And and sometimes I get really overwhelmed with the current state of the church, the membership and the leadership and just how messy everything feels. Sometimes I feel like there's like these two gospels where some people are like, it's mercy and other people are like, it's justice. And there's like, it's really confusing. And I feel like even at conference, like every other talk was like a different angle, it seemed, you know, I don't know. But I was like, you know what? Humans and co- their connection with God have always been really working hard to figure it out and people's feelings get hurt and people make mistakes, but some people do it right. And some people are right sometimes and wrong others. And it just makes me again, like trust the process and trust that this is Christ's church, even if it has flaws um, because it always has. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think those are helpful tips. I had not considered like looking at my two favorite talks and my two least favorite talks and cross reference them. I think that's an interesting idea that I'll probably give a try. Yeah. I, w- I wonder if our two favorites and our two least favorites are going to be the same. <laughs> we can talk about it later, but I think so. <laughs> Based on the conversation we had previously. <laughs> yeah. um, great. Is there anything else you want to share before I share my final comments? Um, yeah, but I can, I can share it another time because it's not super specific to this conversation. So... Shoot me with your final shot. <laughs> uh, the, the, so the, the thought I had yesterday um, was a thought I've shared on the podcast before, and it kind of carried over in today. And that's the, the, the last miracle that Jesus performed was just outside of the, of the Garden of Gethsemane, where he was being arrested, and Peter took out his sword to defend Jesus and cut off someone's ear. And then the last miracle that Jesus performed was to heal that wound. Like the last thing that Jesus did was to take something that one of his disciples did to co- that caused pain, but was done with the best of intentions and then fix it. And I was thinking about that yesterday and today I thought, and, and, and I've told the story before and I say, so if we're hurt by something that, that an apostle says or does with the best of intentions, you know, we go to Christ for healing. And so, and I thought of that last night and say like, like, what does that look like for me to go to Christ for healing? Like, like what is, like, what does that actually look like? You know, when, when my heart was so hurt, um, just, you know, just, just recently, like, like, like how, how do I actually get healing? And that's something I pondered and it, it's been quite personal. Um, and I don't need to share any more than, than I've already shared, but, um, I just want to say that, that I, I was really deeply hurt and I felt like I've experienced the miracle of healing. And what I feel, um, called to do is, is to continue doing my best to live the commandments. I'm going to continue engaging the church. I'm going to keep, I'm going to uh, read all the conference talks over the next few months and see what inspiration I, I can get from those and, and, and do my best to move forward. And, you know, I want to, I want to do my best to, to walk with, to walk with Jesus and be on the Jesus trail. And, and uh, I, I trust that just as he's guided my, my path in, in the past, he'll guide it in the future. And I'm just, uh, I, I feel a, a renewed hope um, that life is going to be beautiful and wonderful and eternity is going to be better than I can even imagine. Yeah, I think that's really beautiful. And I'm proud of you for like sharing, like being authentic with your pain. Because I know that can kind of be uncomfortable for you sometimes. Well, yeah. I mean, it's uncomfortable for the, everyone. Th- th- this is the hard thing. I just like, I got so many messages from gay friends over the weekend, like, oh my gosh, this conference was so hard. I feel so broken. And then other people are like, oh my gosh, it was so beautiful and inspiring. I feel so great. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with all these different feelings, but just, yeah. you know, be honest about mine. Yeah. I like that. I think, 
I think God really does work in mysterious ways. And it was really cool to have such a beautiful experience yesterday after having a negative one. And then like last night, my siblings and Ryan's family, we were all together and we all had dinner and like played like Sunday board games after. And it was just like fun. And I just felt really secure there. And I was like, this is, this is family. This is life. This is experience. And all of these emotions are the reason I came to earth. So I could grapple and wrestle and so, and experience this joy. And yesterday I had bitter and I had sweet, you know, and there's something beautiful about that. Um, yeah. And I would, I would rather have both than numb myself to either. Yeah. And you know, what, what you just said reminded me of uh, yesterday Wilson's talk from the gather conference where he talked about dissonance and resonance and how we need these dissonant chords. Um, and then the resonance, uh, the resolution that comes and mm -hmm. that resolution is more be made more beautiful by the dissonance. And, you know, similarly, I, I feel like, I, I feel like the, the spiritual experience that I had today was maybe perhaps made more beautiful because of the dissonance I experienced over the weekend. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. I think that's a wonderful way to end. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for joining us today. If you have enjoyed this or other episodes, please consider leaving a review, following us on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube at Questions from the Closet, or sharing this podcast with someone you love. And as always, please remember that we do not represent the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or Brigham Young University. We're not trying to be prescriptive or tell anyone what to think or what to do. You heard three perspectives and there are many, many more. We encourage you to listen to other voices and hear a wide variety of experiences. If you would like to submit a question or share a comment about today's episode, you can email us at questionsfromthecloset at gmail.com. Until, Until next time. time.